folks and I'd like to show you dill hijacking which is a lot of fun you can find very exciting vulnerabilities this way so what we're going to do and we're of course using not the flare VM but the one with uh, but there's all the tools already installed so you can make a malicious dill with the Metasploit framework and this is one of the many reasons why we had to get rid of antivirus I've installed Metasploit on this Windows machine, and Metasploit is an all-purpose hacking tool that will make all kinds of malware, so it will drive your antivirus crazy. So C Metasploit Framework Bin MSF Venom is the tool MSF Venom that makes malware. And that tool should be on here. And it is. Okay, those are the options it has. So what this is going to do is make a Windows 64-bit shell bind uh, malware which will open a listening port and it'll let anybody that can send traffic to that port can control your machine and this is going to make a library file in format of dill so i'm going to do this in my downloads folder just so i know where to find it so here i am in student let me make this bigger all right all right and so I'm going to go into Downloads. All right. And let's do a DIR to see if there's anything. Nothing much here. All right. Now let's run that command. Okay, this is going to create a malicious dill in the Downloads folder. And if I had antivirus scanning that folder, it would freak out and delete it and get mad at me and stuff. But that's why we got rid of the antivirus to do this kind of work. Okay, good. It's normal that it complains about stuff, but it should finish. While that's happening, I think I'll turn off the firewall, which really does mess this up. It makes the malware not run. Okay, on, 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 and I want it off, off, off. So there should be a turn off somewhere. Um, which Microsoft seems to be hiding more than usual. Uh, public network. Okay, I can turn it off here. I guess that will do. It'll be off for the current network. Used to be a button to just turn it off entirely, but uh, they seem to have decided to hide that somewhere all right and this finished so now I have a dill file 87k 8700 bytes okay that's a malicious library now let's play with MSDTC this uh, one cool see if you want to do a privilege escalation on Windows to move from a non-administrative user to administrator or from administrator up to system it's incredibly easy to do because there are so many things running as system. You remember we used Process Explorer before, and there were dozens of services running as system that have launched since before you started the machine, before you logged in. Um, not before you logged, started, but before you logged in. And so one of them is the Distributed Transaction Coordinator. So let's look at services. This is the Microsoft utility to see all those running background services, most of which run as system. And a bunch of these are not really important. Normal users are not using them, but they're running anyway. So you can totally use them as a gateway to hacking the machine and nobody will care that you messed with it. So, oops, didn't listen to me very well. There we go. All right. So MSDTC is the one I want, which is the distributed transaction coordinator. This does something having to do with databases. As far as I can tell from this help message, this would only matter if I was running a database server. So it's perfectly fine to mess with it. So I'm going to stop it and then adjust its properties. I go to properties and see um, logon. Right now it runs as the network service account, which is one high privileged account I might go for, but I'm just going to turn it into something that runs as the system account. So now that's there. Now we're going to run it and see how it works, but we're going to use Process Monitor, which is bloody awesome. And this is the most important tool to learn about for this section, because Process Monitor is, what's, is another 
uh, utility from Sys Internals, and it lets you see exactly how Windows programs run and all the pieces they load. And it turns out that they load things that are really pretty dangerous. And this lets you see it. And all Process Monitor does is it lets you see the Windows event log in a better way. All this is is a graphical view of the event log. So these are all the events scrolling by. I'm going to hit the third icon to stop sniffing. And that was already 35,000 events of 69,000 events. It's so many events. This is like Wireshark. The traffic's going by so fast, uh, it can fill up the memory. Now let me make it bigger. Options, font. Thankfully, this one does let you make the font bigger because as most Windows tools, the font is way too low, too small. All right, there we are. The font is much bigger. And now, so the only way to, to handle these thousands of events is to put on a filter to only see the events of interest to you. And so in this case, I'm going to filter it by process name, contains msdtc, and path ends with .dll. So all I want to know is what this one service uses and what libraries it uses. That's all I want to hear about. I want nothing else. So there's a filter here, filter, filter. And now you can enter items like that. Let me make my columns bigger to match my bigger font. There we are. And all right, so I'm going to do a process name. And I'll do ends, process name contains MSDTC. That's good enough. MSDTC, database transaction coordinator or something, and add that. And then I'm going to do path ends with dot dll and add that okay now that's my filtering setup now i'm going to start sniffing again and i'm going to start that process again which i stopped so i go back here and start the service now i go back to here and i see it's found the events so i'm going to stop sniffing and look what happened here. Here's various results, success, file locked, and such. And you can see, by the way, all the things that your machine is doing. For example, AVG, the antivirus, is messing around with things, like checking these things to decide if they're malicious before launching them, and stuff like that. And this is, I, I saw a like YouTube video from a guy that said he found so many vulnerabilities to report just by using this tool, because you can see that it does something dangerous. And that's what we're going to find right here. If you go in here, um, we are going to find a dill that it could not load, which is oci.dill. Um, so we look down here, and we will find one of the items that failed. Is oci. Dot dill. And it might take me a little while to find it. There it is. OCI.dill. If you look at the result, name not found. It did not find this library, and then it did not look anywhere else. It looked only in this one location, C Windows System 32, and it didn't find it. And then the process launched anyway. Now, this comes from a simple mistake the developer made. The developer put in the include line to include that library, but then never used it. This is, of course, quite common as you go through versions of code. You remove some module, and some library you included is no longer needed, and you don't remember that. So the program will try to load the library, but if the library is not there, it will just run anyway fine, because it never uses it. That's what we want, because the library that we made was a fake malicious library, and malicious libraries made by uh, Metasploit are really, really fake. They don't have any actual functionality at all. All they have is malware. So if any library was to actually try to use a function in there, you would get busted. It would notice, and it wouldn't be fooled by that dumb Metasploit dill. But this is the case where it will be fooled, where you load a library and never use it. Because when you first load a library, Microsoft runs the win main um, item in that library. There's a process that runs just when you load a library, and that's where the malware is. So simply loading the library is enough to run the malware. So all we have to do 
And if you were to look in Process Explorer, which I don't think I'll bother, you'll see that the OCI.dil was not in fact loaded. It couldn't be. And yet the process runs just fine because it doesn't really care whether it loads that or not. So all we have to do is put that malware in the path where it will be found. So I'm going to go to the command prompt. I use an administrator command prompt so I can stop um, system processes. Whoops, that's not administrator. Right click, right click, and run as administrator. There we go. All right, and now I'm going to go into my downloads folder where the malware is, which is users, IE user, IE user? Maybe it's students. I think it's IE user. All right, let's see what's going on here. DIR. It's student. Okay. All right, and then CD downloads. Okay. So there is my shellbind.dil. So first I'm going to stop the service. Net stop msdtc and it'll take a few seconds to stop it. Okay, now I can copy this shell bind into C Windows System 32 OCI.dil, which is where it expects to be loading that Microsoft library. So I run that and it'll do it because I'm the administrator. I can write there and now I um, will start it again and I can view it in Process Monitor again. So I will clear the old items. I think that's clear, the fifth item. Yeah, and now I will... Ah, this is annoying. Oh, AVG busted me. AVG is scanning C Windows System. Okay, I got to adjust AVG to quit scanning C Windows System. See, this Metasploit malware is pretty obvious. So your antivirus will catch it. So let me go to my antivg and tell it not to look in C. That's what Caitlin said, just don't look in the whole C drive. If I can do that, that's awesome. Uh, settings. Exceptions. Add exception. Can I actually put in C? <laughs> if so, that is outrageous. <laughs> Add exception. And let me do it. Okay, if that's true, then I can get away with just blatantly putting malware in C Windows system and AVG will stop whining about it. Let's see if that's true. Okay, copy that file. Okay, now I want to run the sniffing again in Process Monitor. I want to start sniffing again, and now I want to start that process. Net stop stopped it, and net start should start it. Okay, and there it goes, trying to load the dills, and here it is trying to start. So it loaded the dill. Now this machine is owned. If I open a new command prompt, I should find a listening process. If I do netstat minus an pipe more, there, there it is. There's a process listening on 4444. Anybody can take over my machine now by just connecting on port 4444. I can also do it locally. All they have to do is do a ncat, which is a clone of netcat ported to Windows, ncat, uh, 127.001.44.44. I think I have to use a space for 44.44 maybe. Yep, and now I'm in. Now I control the machine. And if I do who am I, I am system. So I'm elevated above administrator. Now it's got a listening shell running on that service piggybacking and offering control of my machine to anybody that wants to connect. So that's the, uh, the joy of Process Monitor. With Process Monitor, you can notice where it loads things, and many, many Windows attacks have been based on this. There was an old classic one um, in the early NT 3.5, and I think NT 4, the early versions of Windows NT, they would load the process that draws the desktop, Explorer. They would just load it with the name Explorer and the operating system would then hunt for it. So you could download a fake explorer in some place like somebody's home folder and it would load it instead. So you could totally Trojan the whole process. And so that's this one. This is the simplest case called dill hijacking. There's another one I don't think I'll go through in detail, but it's the real punchline. This one took me like a week or two to get going is dill proxying. That's where you fool a process that is not this stupid. 
So you have Metasploit, you can make malware. But if so, what you do, you find a program that is not so stupid. This one is BG Info. BG Info is a sysinternals tool. It is not as dumb as that Microsoft uh, database transaction coordinator. But if you run it, you will find that it looks for version.dil. It looks for it in the home directory you ran it from, which was on my desktop. And then when it doesn't find it, it goes and looks in C Windows System 32. So this is a classic companion Trojan attack. You can put a file in the wrong place and the program will be fooled. So I can kick it to load from there. But the problem is, if you make a malicious deal with Metasploit and try to put it there, it won't fall for it because it actually uses the API calls inversion. So in Visual Studio and another tool called Dill Export Viewer, you can make a proxy dill that will take all these functions. Here's like the 14 functions in get version, the version.dill. You can get a list of them. You can write code that will you make these pragma comment lines that will forward it to another dill. You can make a dill in the middle that will forward all the real system calls to the real dill so they'll work, but will also perform a malicious activity. And that's what this does. This is the uh, parser.py that, that parses the tool to make it ready. And here is the actual malware that you make in um, Visual Studio. And what it does is it's going to, um, let me find it down here. There we are. What this does, this is the exploit. It's going to, when you run, when you load the dill, it's going to run dill main. That's what dills do automatically. Dill main is going to call exploit, and exploit will run this file, payload.bat. You can just write a MS DOS batch file to do whatever you want. It will do that, and it will fool BG info because it passes for the real dill. So you just have to put that in the right place. You have to build a dill in Visual Studio, which turned out to be not too hard, although it took me a couple days of Googling to get it right because there's a lot of little switches to set in Visual Studio. And then you can do the same attack with, um, with this tool. It will load your malicious dill. So it's kind of tricky, but that's dill proxying. And this is actually pretty hot in the red teaming these days. Um, a lot of software is vulnerable to this. It doesn't always load all the components from the right folder. It guesses sometimes, and when it guesses, you can slip in a fake component. What's surprising is it doesn't bother to verify the signatures of these components. You know, there is code signing. Microsoft could sign all these files. They could verify the signature every time they load a file, and they just don't. Anyway, so that's good, clean fun.